Technology is advancing noticeably every day. Every new day, technology will get you something to make your jaw drop or make you feel goosebumps. And when it comes to robotics or AI, science is turning sci-fi movies into reality. So, what new things are there for this week? Are you ready for them? But before that, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Think you like what you see? Then also be sure to hit that bell icon while you are at it to ensure that you are notified every time we come out with a fresh new piece of content for you. That being said, let's begin. First things first, or maybe bird things first. Either way, let's talk about BirdBot. It is a low-energy robot. If a T-Rex from 66 million years ago had the same body form as an ostrich racing through the savanna, today, this is the structure of BirdBot. This is an excellent illustration of evolutionary selection. Flightless birds like the ostrich are graceful, elegant, and powerful. Ostriches, some weighing more than 100 kilograms, can run up to 55 kilometers per hour through the savanna. The animal-like structure is considered to assist the ostriches except exceptional locomotor capabilities. When pouring their legs up towards their bodies, birds, unlike humans, fold their feet back. Why do animals behave in this manner? Why is this foot movement pattern for walking and running so energy efficient? Is it possible to transfer the bird's leg anatomy, including all of its bones, muscles, and tendons, to walking robots? At the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems, Alexander Badri Sprovitz has spent more than five years researching these issues. He is the group leader for dynamic locomotion. In the fields of biomechanics and neural control, his team studies at the intersection of biology and robotics. The group's major focus is on dynamic movement in animals and robotics. Badri Sprovitz has built a robot that, like its natural model, is energy efficient with the help of his doctorate student Albors Agamelki Servistani. Bird bots require fewer motors than conventional machines and, in theory, might scale to vast sizes. Badri Sprovitz and Agamelki Servistani, a roboticist and director at MPIS, as well as biology professor Monica Adele of the University of California, Irvine, published their findings in Science Robotics on March 16. Next, Ibex, which is a robot created by Kawasaki and inspired by the highly horny species of goat native to several hilly regions of Africa and Eurasia. As far as we can tell, it made its debut at this year's I R E X in Japan, and we should discuss why the Kawasaki robot Ibex exists now, aside from the fact that it's a lot of fun to say out loud, of course. Since 2015, Kawasaki has been working on Kaleido, a robust humanoid platform that is a buddy of the program. Masayuki Salvi, the RHP's development manager, was recently interviewed about the BEX program on the Kawasaki Robotics website. They felt the challenge of biped robots when developing Kaleido since humanoid robots had the same shape as humans. They are extremely adaptable, having the ability to perform everything that humans can do in the end. However, putting it to practical use will take a long time. On the other hand, they are working on a self-propelled service robot with wheels, but legs are still preferable to wheels for going over uneven terrain. So they wondered whether there was a middle ground between humanoid and wheel robots. That's why Bex, a quadruped walking robot, was created. They believe that the walking technology developed for humanoid robots can be extended to quadruped walking robots with certainty. Moving on to the next, looking for a strawberry picking robot that uses less energy in a field in Davis, California. A firm named Agrobot debuted a strawberry harvesting robot 10 years ago. The Agrobot strawberry picker is still a prototype today. The long delay emphasizes the difficulty of any berry picking robot. Identify a ripe berry, grip it firmly but not too tightly to damage the fruit, and pull hard enough to extract it from the plant without injuring it. Juan Bravo, the CEO of Agrobot, claims that his company's machine can't compete with individuals who can pick and pack food into clamshells by hand. Still farmers anticipate a time when finding people ready to work in the fields all day would be difficult and paying them will be prohibitively expensive. As a result, farmers, technicians, and researchers continue to look for devices that can perform the task. Bowery, a Silicon Valley startup founded in 2016, has acquired Traptic, a Silicon Valley startup that began commercial deployments with Nature Ripe and a Blazer Wilkinson two significant strawberry farmers last year. Traptic will be adapted for indoor vertical farming by Bowery since, like most of its competitors, Traptic systems are primarily used in the fields of California or Florida. The creators of Traptic can gather 100,000 strawberries every day. It will now only work on Bowery indoor farms, marking the company's first use of robotic arms. Bowery relies heavily on computer vision, sensors, and technology to grow lettuce for customers, such as Safeway and Walmart. Bowery plans to move robotic arms between indoor strawberry rows in the same way it moves automated vehicles between fields. Bowery will employ robotic arms to pollinate strawberry blossoms and do maintenance tasks like thinning and pruning leaves in addition to harvesting. After that, we got DARPA's underground challenge, Cornelius, 
a hog-sized robot with fat rubber tank treads. It has come to a halt in a little packed courtyard on California State University, Channel Island's Spanish Restoration Campus. Either it's self-contained or it's not. Squinting into the July sun, Kevin Nodler explains, Nodler, who has been building robots for decades, understands how difficult it is to distinguish between a machine that is going to do something and one that is thinking. The robot sprints toward a rucksack that is laying 15 feet away on the ground. However, it becomes stranded on a big boulder midway through its voyage. It's not the bag or the way it's set up right now. It simply drives inexorably toward it. Cornelius is in detecting mode, which forces it to locate backpacks regardless of impediments, according to Herdering. What appears to be ordinary robotics undergrad work is a fever brought on by a team known as Coordinated Robotics to a major event in the autonomous world. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, presented the last round of the Subterranean Challenge. Cornelius and the other 20 robots in the coordinated fleet were trucked off to compete in Kentucky's Louisville Big Gathering in September 2021. Since 2004, DARPA has hosted public challenges, such as Sub-T. There are now robots that can measure your blood pressure. His study involves developing how robots may carry out fundamental healthcare chores in specific settings, such as in distant places or where minimum physical interaction is required, such as during pandemics. Using the intricacy of origami and inspired by the motions of nature's leeches, the findings were published in Nature Publishing Group's Flexible Electronics Journal. Kim and colleagues have replaced the traditional blood pressure process by replicating the folding mechanics of the leech in their invention of 3D printable origami sensors. Alongside PhD student Tiho Kim and a team from SFU's Additive Manufacturing Lab, a humanoid sensing robot's fingers can be fitted with leech-inspired origami LIO sensors. Kim, a professor and assistant head of SFU School of Mechatronic Systems Engineering, adds, Our origami-inspired dry electro possesses unique qualities such as suction for gripping and foldability inspired by nature. We found that, in line with nature, leeches have an expanded posterior sucker and body, as well as organs that expand and contract properly to maintain a greater adherence to their victim. Using this perspective, we discovered that origami can produce comparable motions and can also be adjusted. The robot's fingertips include LIO sensors that may be placed on the patient's chest. Combining data from electrocardiogram ECG and photoplethysmogram PPG measurements, which are captured by sensors on the fingers of each hand, blood pressure is monitored and approximated. The data from the coupled sensors may be used to calculate a patient's systolic and diastolic blood pressure without the use of a standard cuff-based digital stigma manometer using established algorithms. Other human physiological signals, such as those from an electrocardiogram, which measures heart rate, temperature, and respiration rate, were measured by sensing robots in Kim's previous work. A specialized distant technique to healthcare technology, robotics offers a viable risk and increased patient care effectiveness and decreased quality, adds Kim. The researchers intend to conduct more trials of their novel technology and are working on the next generation of sensors which they believe will lead to a biomedically relevant use. Blood pressure monitoring is an important medical diagnostic tool for a variety of chronic conditions as well as overall health. Sensing robots have significant benefits in medical healthcare systems because they may aid healthcare staff in monitoring patient vital signs while also providing a pleasant atmosphere for patients who may need to be separated. Kim believes that robots have the ability to play a crucial role in the new age of remote healthcare by providing a future platform or bridge between medical workers and and distant patients. Nicola. Nicola is an android that is being developed at Ryaiken, a Japanese scientific research institute. Nicola's job is to assist researchers in validating the correctness of facial expressions, which it accomplishes by attempting to create a variety of facial emotions that people can hopefully recognize. It's still under development, but it will include body parts soon, and it's based on a male human youngster to encourage natural relationships with both adults and children. This is part of a wider Ryaiken effort dubbed the Guardian Robot Project, which aims to create an autonomous robot that can be near to people and feel their hearts. People will accept such a robot once it is developed, and it will take an active role in every area of our homes and society. Is it really necessary to rely on an Android form factor for these natural interactions if it's going to do that? Is re Akin anticipating something? This is not something that everyone agrees on. To be clear, Nicola is far from the worst Android we've encountered. It's also a research platform, so we shouldn't be too hard on it. That's especially true given that tests have shown it to be successful at what it's designed to do. The paper that comes with it demonstrates that individuals were able to correctly read the robot's facial expressions. Because androids can be difficult to read at times, 
especially when expressing negative emotions, which are more difficult to distinguish. This research was necessary. This is one of the reasons why some people are skeptical, but androids are the best solution for human-robot interaction. If we were the ranking researchers, we'd also tone down the somewhat idealistic assertion about robots making people feel their hearts. They claim that they will take an active part in every element of our homes, and society is even more doubtful. It's not difficult for robots to make people feel things. However, there is a significant transition from feeling things to actively participating in everything. Even now, robots that make us feel things can play a limited and specific function in our homes and society. This isn't to suggest that such rules aren't important, effective, or beneficial. We must make every effort to keep our expectations realistic and grounded. This concludes today's installment of our weekly updates on the latest future technologies in robotics. Join us again next time for more fascinating news from the robotics field. To keep updated with us, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you at the next one. Until then, peace.